Hey guys, it's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to plot and farm Chia coins on the Raspberry Pi 4. So let's get started. From time to time, this channel actually shown a little bit of interest on how to mine coins with the Raspberry Pi or other concepts with the Raspberry Pi on mining or Bitcoin in general. Now, I'm not a huge fan of just GPU and CPU mining, so that's how come I don't really showcase on my rig or anything because I just don't do it. This time around, I find this new coin to be very interesting. Instead of proof of work, what we're normally used to, which is taking your GPU or your CPU to mine for the next block, in this case, we are actually using this new process called proof of space, which means we're actually gonna be using a lot of hard drive space just to find the next block. The concept is really cool. There's actually a lot of documentation, which I'll leave a link down in the description below on how it works. But to break it down a little bit, it's basically farming. So you are actually trying to get a chance to win this, this golden fruit. And you need a lot of land to do it, which is in our case, hard drive space. You first start off with plotting. You plot all the land, just like in farming, you would have acres of land, but you have to mulch it. You have to cultivate it. You have to turn it into usable soil. So that's what you do with plotting. You basically create all these plots, which is about 101 gigabytes per plot. And the larger the hard drive you have, the more acreage or the more land you have to farm and to get this chance to win this golden fruit. So if you have one plot, you're gonna farm on that, you're gonna plant all your seeds, it's gonna grow, and then you look through it, no golden fruit, you wipe it out again, and then you plant new ones over and over again until you get this golden fruit. So the more plots you have, the faster you are able to plant, and the higher the chance you are able to get this golden fruit. So that's the whole concept of proof of space. Now, it doesn't take much CPU power to run this. It, again, it just uses hard drive space. The plotting process, in the other hand, does take a little bit of CPU usage. You don't need something like a Ryzen 7 or anything, but it does help. The main part about plotting is it's going to do a lot of read and writes on the hard drive just to cultivate this space, just to make this plot for you. And then once the plot is created, you can move it over to a hard drive. So what I'm gonna be showing you is the whole process of installing the software, installing the GUI wallet, and getting the plots to work and the farming to work. But before that, a word from my sponsor. If you guys are not using VPNs, please do so because that is the best way to mash yourself from your ISPs or wherever you are. If you're in like a public cafeteria or Starbucks or something like that, you wanna be able to encrypt your data so nobody can see what you're doing. And one of the best ways is to get a VPN. And what I use is private internet access. Now, if you've been a long time viewer of this channel, you probably know, I've been using it for about eight years. I have no issues with it. And with the recent updates that they have and the ability to use WireGuard, I'm getting four times the speed as I was before. Yeah, it's, it's just free improvement basically. And having that amount of bandwidth allows me to stream high quality content. Now, private internet access is basically worldwide. They have almost 10,000 servers in 70 different countries. And I'm not even saying this, with like some prompt or something like that. I just know this because I've been using them for so long. If you see my previous video, way back when, I think a year ago, they were only allowing five devices for one account. And now they upped that. They put 10 devices per account. So you could actually get more devices. They also support every operating system that's out there, which is Windows, Mac OS, iOS, Android, Linux, Raspberry Pi, anything that you can think of, it will work on it. So you don't have to worry about that. They also have 24 hour support. So if you run into any issues and I actually have ze almost zero downtime. I mean, there are times where it's down and I know that they're doing upgrades, but it'll switch the server and I have no issue. And if you're using their desktop app, there's the ability to disconnect your internet if the VPN does go down. Another big thing about this company, why I chose to use it is because they have no logs. If I don't want the cafeteria or the cafe or any my ISP to know what I'm doing, I wouldn't want them to know either. So they have no logs whatsoever. It also allows for P2P. And if you guys don't know what that is, don't worry about it. My main use scenario for this sometimes is to move to another country so I could watch stuff that's available in different places that's not available in the States. But yeah, you could do that with this as well. And best of all, if you're using the link down in the description below, you get three free months of private internet access. So not only do they have a 30 day money bank guarantee you also get three free months so really you have nothing to lose now in this video we're actually going to be running raspberry pi 4 the 4 gigabyte model originally i was actually going to plan to use the cm4 with our card setup on it but these are harder to obtain than the raspberry pi 4 so this whole video is going to be based off the raspberry pi 4 i'm also going to be using these usb sata cables for the hard drives and as far as the hard drive goes for the plotting process you would want either an ssd 
or a regular spindle. Either one of these work fine for the Raspberry Pi because of the throughput of the USB port. We're not gonna get full speed out of these, but uh, it's either one that you could use. Now, I read online that somebody was using an SSD, a one terabyte one, and within a month of just plotting, the SSD was completely done. So these are called burner drives. If you're gonna do this on plotting, you will burn through these hard drives where it's not usable anymore. So I would recommend if you are gonna be using a Raspberry Pi, probably a spindle because they last a lot longer. And the fact is we don't have enough throughput to use the full bandwidth of the SSD anyway on the Raspberry Pi. So it doesn't really matter at this point. Now, it is also highly recommend that you plot on another computer instead because the Raspberry Pi just cannot do it as fast as a regular computer can. If you do have the ability to actually plot on another computer and you could actually use a SATA or even NVMe, I recommend doing that. But again, keep in mind, these drives will be burnt out. They will be done. As far as the farming drive, I am gonna be using this eight terabyte, it's actually hooked up right now, this eight terabyte hard drive. So once you're done plotting, all the plots go into the drive. This drive could be actually be moved around. So basically, if I'm plotting on another computer, you could just take that hard drive that you're done plotting on and move it over to a Raspberry Pi and just have the Raspberry Pi farm instead of just plotting. But in, in this video, I'm gonna show you both on the Raspberry Pi. This way you have your choice on what you wanna do. Now popping over to the desktop, the first thing you need is to install Ubuntu 21.04, which you could use through the Raspberry Pi imager. When you're done with that, go through the entire setup process and then you'll be presented with your desktop. Now I'm not gonna theme anything, I'm just gonna keep this as stock, um, but you could do whatever you want with this. Now I am gonna leave a link to this website which gives you a full complete guide on how to install it on the Raspberry Pi. I am gonna be using this as a reference, but I'm not following this guide to the T. So um, yeah, you can read it on your own. Two, this is a Chia calculator, which tells you how much farming you could do on how much space you need. So. Uh, Definitely check this out to see how long it'll take you to actually earn a block. And again, I'm using eight terabytes. So if I was to swap this over to say like eight terabytes, it will take me about, is it seven months? Is that right? Let me switch it over to 16. Yeah, yeah. If it's eight terabytes, it's gonna take me about six months um, or seven months. 16 terabytes would be three months. I do have four of those drives, so it's actually gonna be 32 terabytes, so it'll take me about two months. Wow, okay. That is crazy because a month ago, no, not a month ago, a couple of days ago when I checked the same exact website, 32 terabytes would be about a month. So the difficulty actually shot up as we're doing this video, that's insane. Uh, okay, get on this as soon as you can if you guys are interested. Now third, um, my buddy over at Category 5, Robbie, he actually made a calculator for how you should be plotting and what settings you should be using. So if you have NVMe capable drives or regular hard drives, it'll tell you what settings you should use for plotting because the plotting is also just as important as farming because you have to constantly plot and make these spaces. So the faster you can get the plots up and working, the faster you can farm. So definitely check out his website. Also check out his channel because he's made multiple videos on this Chia coin. He's actually helped me when I was asking some questions about this. So definitely check out his channel and he has a, a couple of videos regard, related to Chia coins. So the first thing we're gonna do is pop over into terminal and we're gonna start hammering away at these things. I'm gonna make the font a little bit bigger so it's much easier to read. And to start off, we are gonna need to do this, build essentials and Python 3 dev, okay? Now we do have swap space already, so we don't have to worry about the swap. If you're using Ubuntu 21.04, swap is already done. I would also recommend overclocking if you are planning to plot on your Raspberry Pi. So sudo apt install build essentials and Python 3-dev. Okay, this will take a few minutes to install, so I'm just gonna let that go through. All right, next we have git, but I don't believe it's installed by default, so I'm gonna sudo app install git, just to double check. Yeah, it wasn't installed in default. I could have done that on the previous thing too. Now we are gonna copy and paste this little thing, git clone, I'm gonna copy that paste it into there and we're gonna grab that. Once we are done, we are gonna change our folder over to Chia blockchain and their next command is to in 
install then activate okay so sh install dot sh this will actually install all the repos that it's need anything that's missing it's going to try to install it now it does have an installer while that's happening in the background right here experimental gui installer now i did give this a try and it didn't work on 21.04 it might work by the time you are watching this, so you could give this a try, but I'm manually gonna install everything. Which So this process will actually take about maybe five to 10 minutes, so I'm just gonna let this run. Once it's all done, I do dot, dot slash, dot, dot slash, activate, like it says on the bottom. Okay, so now we're in that environment. So we're gonna do chia, init. All right, now that that is all done, it's gonna ask you to generate a key. So I'm gonna skip this entire step. Even on the guide, it says to generate the key. I'm gonna skip that whole thing and just jump right into installing the GUI because the GUI will actually have you install generated key. So I'm gonna do sh install GUI.sh. Okay. Once everything is done, that's all you have to run. NPM run electron and ampersand, right? Is that what it is? Hit enter, give that a second. Oh, you know what? I forgot to change the folder. So CD to Chia blockchain GUI and then run that command. There you go. And there we have it. The wallet is booting up. It's going to get connected. It actually has a dark mode and a light mode. So if you want to play around with that as well, it's pretty cool. So from here on, you want to create a brand new private key. If you have a wallet already, you might already have the 24 words. So you could actually import from another wallet. So I'm going to do create private key. And these are all the 24 words. Don't worry, I'm going to delete this afterwards. So even if you grab this, it's whatever. So what I would generally do is just copy down everything in this order and save it. Okay, so once everything is booting, you could actually start plotting and everything. It's going to sync eventually, but you could start plotting and farming. Now, I don't have any plots to farm on, so I do have to start with the plot. So here I could add a plot. Now, this is the time where you would actually start putting in your hard drives together, plugging it into the system and all that other stuff. So I'm going to do that right now and jump back onto here and start plotting. So what I'm going to be doing here is disk. And GNOME has their own disk utility. You could use GNOME disk utility, but this should be able to see what hard drives you have. So I just plugged in a one terabyte Western digital drive and then an eight terabyte unformatted drive. Now, the best way to do this is to use EXT FAT. Or you can use anything that's NTFS, EXT FAT, or I believe Mac journaling system. You could use all three of those. Um, I would use EXT FAT because it both supports Windows and Linux. And it would be a little bit easier. Now, I do have to wipe this out because I might have something on here. So I'm going to delete that volume, delete, and it should empty out the whole thing. So now I'm going to create format partition and I'm going to name this burner and erase. You could actually change it over to ext4, ntfx, fat32. Like I said, don't use that. Um, but I am going to, since everything's Linux, I'm just going to use ext4. Next, format. So now it's formatting the one terabyte drive that I have hooked up through the USB port. Now while I'm waiting, I believe I could also do the eight terabyte one. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Format, name this, farming. And I am also gonna use ext4, next, and then format. So I don't know if you could hear that spin up, but that just spun up. And my one terabyte drive is done. Now it's not mounted or anything, so you could hit the play button to mount the drive. So now it's called burner. And then once this is done, I got to mount this as well. So since Linux use everything as a folder structure, you do have to mount everything and point to the appropriate locations for the drives. Also, if you are planning to use multiple hard drives, you don't have to raid them. You could actually use multiple separate partitions of drives. You just have to select the directories. So now I got the eight terabyte drive located. I am also going to mount that. So now I have burner and farmer on the right side. And where is the directory? Okay, media done farming, media done burner. Okay, so now select temporary directory. So I'm going to select the burner disk. And I am going to go to here. 
and it already puts the location in. So media done burner. I'm going to hit OK. And for the final destination, the farming disk, I am going to put this as well. Hit OK. So now I have everything and I can just start creating plots. Now, if you go over to, again, my friend's website, he has a way how you want to plot everything, how much RAM, how much CPU usage, what the capable drive of plotting is, and he'll tell you what you should be using. So if I was using more threads, he'll actually like change the option over to like using parallel options and stuff like that. So if I have more farming capabilities, uh, more RAM, uh, change the options, balance, more output, like it all depends. You could change it around and see what the best settings for your operations are. So going back to here, it's going to start plotting. And basically it's going to be burning through my one terabyte drive. Once it's done, it's going to go to farm. And as, once I get my first farm or the first plot of land, I could start farming already. And then as it increases, it'll use more and more and more and go on from there. All right, so to farm, you would have to have at least some plots. On this location, you would do add a plot directory. And in my case, it would actually be the farming drive and select plot directory. I don't think it's going to find anything because I just started this up. But this allows you to add multiple drives, uh, multiple locations, so forth and so forth. And then it'll start coming up with information. But I don't have anything here. Anyway, that is about it for running a plot and a farm. All it is is a matter of getting the wallet up connecting your hard drives and formatting your hard drives to a way it needs to be. And then just adding parts in your farm. Now I'm going to check back on this probably in a couple of weeks and to see how I've done, how many plots I've got, what the progress is. But for now, that's how you get started. Now I do recommend if you are planning to do this, get started as soon as possible because the difficulty is jumping so high. So many people are trying to get into this right now. Anyway, that is it for me. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you guys have any questions, I will try to answer them. But again, check my buddy's YouTube channel out, uh, Category 5 TV. He has more information about this and he's gotten a little bit further than I have on the progress. So check out his channel. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.